Okay, one of the most important variables of your success in cryptocurrency is how quickly you can get through as many different altcoins as possible. You also have to have the ability to filter out the scams from the innovation. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys a strategy that has made me millions before the age of 25 and I've used it for literally the past six years in cryptocurrency, keep watching. What's going on everybody, Alex back with another video. Today we're gonna be jumping into strategy. Pretty much every time I make one of these strategy videos, you guys love it, I see it in the comment section. So show the love again. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, my name is Alex. I talk about cryptocurrency entrepreneurship. I try to keep things as down to earth as possible and I back up everything I say with as much evidence as I possibly can. And in this video here, we're actually gonna go over some strategy, okay? So basically I have a very simple research process and it allows me you know, to get through a lot of different cryptocurrencies. Obviously, anyone can make a cryptocurrency nowadays right you could literally spend less than 150 bucks on a transaction fee and mint your own token right now the ability to get through these coins as quick as possible is very valuable i usually have uh three research levels okay so let me just start the video like this the first level gets through and filters through as many different cryptocurrencies as possible, okay? The second level filters through them a little bit more and compare and contrast within the ecosystem. And then the last level gets you to the actual altcoin selection, okay? If you want the full thing and the full checklist and exactly how I research everything in fundamental analysis, highly suggest you click the link below, go to the fundamentalsecrets.com. But today what we're doing is we're talking about just the first level because really I spend 90% of my time, you know, just shifting through, filtering through scam coins versus, you know, high quality projects. So this is going to be basically the best breakdown. Um, I have this like little checklist here. So you're going to get literally everything and I'm going to show you exactly how I research the cryptocurrencies. And if I get enough, uh, you know, uh, comments or likes or whatever the case is, and you guys are really excited about this, I'll make a full video. Maybe I'll do it in a live stream where I just research right in front of you so you could actually see me in action shifting through all the different cryptocurrencies and all the different websites and stuff like that. All right. So let's jump into the topic of discussion here. Now, the first thing I usually do is I look at CoinMarketCap to look for a couple of different variables. Usually, I'm looking for liquidity, okay? The reason why liquidity is important is because usually in cryptocurrency, that's how people get scammed, right? Have you ever heard of a rug pull, right? Have you ever heard of, you know, a, a flash loan attack or whatever the case is? The amount of money moved from point A to point B can be very quick in cryptocurrency. You could pull all the liquidity out of a decentralized exchange pool. Um, so sometimes I weed out a lot of projects by just seeing if it's on multiple exchanges. So I'll look at CoinMarketCap and I'll, I'll make sure you know, it's on centralized and decentralized exchanges. But to be honest, like that's not the only variable. Like sometimes you could find coins that is only on one exchange that will do well. Um, I'll also look at like the history of the liquidity. I'll look into the actual Uniswap pool um, and I'll see if, you know, there's been a consistent amount of liquidity. Um, also the amount, right? Um, is it over $100,000 worth of liquidity? That's usually really small. I'm looking for the millions most of the time. But if, I mean, you just got to have to gauge it, right? You have to see what scam liquidity looks like. Um, and then from there, you can kind of like properly gauge what the coin is. Because if we're looking at a coin with like $5 million market cap, yeah, the liquidity is going to be low. Um, but you just have to see if it's, it's going to stay because $100,000 liquidity on Uniswap, it's pretty bad, but it's not like out of the ordinary, right? So you just gauging and looking at different options for liquidity is really important, right? And, and sometimes you'll see that there's not that much trading volume. Um, there's not that much money, liquidity depth. Um, so these coins are not going to get adoption by whales, okay? But people with big money, because if a person like me comes in with a hundred grand and you know pop, buys this coin, I could destroy the whole entire liquidity pool, um, and vice versa. You know, I could do it on purpose, right, to take advantage of people. So just understand that slippage is a big thing. And if the coin wants to get a lot of adoption, you have to make sure the liquidity is good and it's plentiful, right? So of course, you know, you got to look into the marketing. That's another variable, right? I look into the liquidity. I'm looking into the quality of the website, the branding. Was this thrown together on Fiverr? Was somebody, you know, just, just got it from like WordPress or something? Was is this a template, right? These are the questions you want to ask because on a website, it pretty much tells their effort. You could spend 50 grand for one website. There's people that do it. Like personally, you know, I've spent a lot of money on building websites. And then there's also these free apps that, you know, you can kind of build a website in less than literally half a day, right? So this will gauge kind of the quality of the team. You guys gotta understand that there's teams out there that will make 17 different cryptocurrencies. So just understand that. Um, and if you see a low quality website, that's a good way to filter out you know, the scam project. And then another variable, and we're just gonna go through the list, is the team, of course. 
This is an obvious one. I briefly and really quickly go through to see if they have, you know, cryptocurrency experience specifically. Obviously, I'll give a, you know, uh, extra point to someone that has cryptocurrency specific experience. It's good that they have traditional background, but that's the most important by far. So you can just quickly look at the team. You don't need to dive deeply, right? That's for uh, level two and level three, which I do dive pretty deep. And I'll even go all the way to, you know, calling these people and trying to get them on an interview with level three if I have to. Um, but for now, we're going to be, you know, th this is a good way to kind of filter it out so that you can focus your, your researching efforts on what matters most. OK, um, also, you have to figure out if this coin was launched in an IDO, OK, which is like an initial DEX offering um, or something. Right. And you have to figure that out. And the reason I say that is because the vesting schedule is really important. And basically what the vesting schedule is, is the amount of tokens that are going to be released by the original seed investors. Right. So. With IDOs, they usually have like this kind of tier system to where if you hold their token, you get access to earlier projects called the incubator model. Um, and these are like the worst. Um, and to be honest, if it's an IDO, it really turns me off most of the time, um, depending on their vesting schedule. So if like their vesting is about to conclude and they've been out for a very long time and they have liquidity and there's trading, right? And people are buying it organically, right? Not just off of like this this like a you know incubator model for me i want to make sure the token emissions are not like crazy in comparison to you know the trading volume make sure that they're not just giving away all their tokens and dumping it on the market right this is really important also you want to ask yourself the question and this is a very very good concept um, that i learned that i've used over and over again what working product do they have do they solve the hair on fire problem and what that basically means is that if my hair is on fire and you offer me water and tell me hey how much would you pay for this water? It'll be unlimited. You, you don't care. Your hair's on fire, right? You're going to pay anything for that water. Whatever project that you're looking to invest into, it's really good to ask yourself that question. Do people really, really, really need this? Like to the point where they'll pay anything for it. And if that's the case, then, you know, the stronger that answer is a yes, the better the project's going to be for sure. Of course, in general, you want to make sure they have a professional effort. So you, a lot of times you'll see me go through the blog. A lot of times you'll see me go through the Twitter. I just want to see professional effort, right? Sometimes you'll go to the blog and there'll be two articles. Sometimes you'll go to the Twitter. They have a lot of followers, but they're not even putting an effort. They haven't put in you know, a tweet in the past two months, right? So the goal here is just to make sure everything they do has a high quality professional effort. Now, I know a lot of people watching this video really don't know whether it's your age limit or you know, your work experience, that you don't really know what serious professionalism is. So I recommend looking at the biggest companies on earth and seeing how they do it, right? Or looking at the biggest cryptocurrencies and seeing how professional their website looks and all of their marketing efforts and you know all the blog and you know information and the communication that they have. Just look at that standard and then compare it to the top cryptocurrency projects and then compare that to you know the project that you're looking at now. Also, another thing I look into is actual price. So, you know, how far from the all-time high is it, right? If this coin was $4 one day and now it's 50 cents, then the bottom's probably in, right? And, and this is a good you know, risk to reward. So I usually look for two different things. Coins that are breaking all time high, right? So you can see that it's getting momentum. It's in a confirmed trend. It's breaking all time high and might you know, continue up or it's bottomed out, right? And the coin has already lost like 70% and now it's about to turn around whatever the case is. So I'm usually looking for anywhere from negative 50 to negative 70% from the all time high. Um, and then this coin is a better buy for me for obvious reasons, you wanna get it at a discount, right? And then of course, you know, I say this all the time, you wanna make sure it's in a confirmed trend. This is so important. Now I tell you guys all the time what the confirmed trends are in my YouTube videos, but this could change, right? So like right now, the big confirmed trend obviously is layer ones, layer twos, and then maybe like metaverse tokens, right? And gaming tokens, all right? So these are kind of confirmed trends. Make sure the coin that you're talking about is close, is innovating on top of the confirmed trend, or it might be a future trend. Now, this is hard to identify if you're not researching cryptocurrency and you're not spending a lot of time on it. Um, but, you know, just again, like I said, make sure the coins that you're researching and you're going to buy potentially is in a confirmed trend, all right? Now, market cap is everything. This basically gauges your risk to reward. Um, so, you know, for this one, it just depends on my taste, right? Like, so it depends on the lump sum of money I'm going to invest. So let's say hypothetically, I have a larger lump sum of money, then I'm looking for a lower risk return. I'm looking for a market cap of like 500 million, 
um, that's going to potentially get to maybe like two, three billion, right? That's what I usually look for, uh, for larger lump sums of capital. And you guys know that. Um, for a very high risk plays, I only have 10 grand, right? I want to invest like five, 10 grand in a super high risk play. Then I'll look for market caps from anywhere from 10 million to like 25 million or 50 million. So just keep in mind, $10,000, it means different to different people. Um, so in general, just gauge the market cap with your risk profile and what you're willing to invest, okay? And then I talked about this a little bit earlier, but let me just kind of re, retouch on it. The issuance is really important. So this is basically like tokenomics. How many tokens are they putting out there? What is the inflation, okay? What is the vesting schedule? Basically, you wanna figure out how many tokens they're dumping on the market. Is it a lot um, compared to this project? Like the less tokens they're pushing out, you know, the better it is for price, okay? Because of obvious reason, you know, scarcity. So just making sure in general, and this can be in a lot of different forms. Like for example, some coins have burning mechanisms. They'll actually burn tokens. This brings the issuance down, right? Some coins have halving cycles, which drops the issuance by 50%, like Bitcoin, right? Some have vesting schedules, which increases the issuance because these guys are dumping tokens on the market, right? Some have aggressive inflation on purpose. So less is more in this case, make sure the issuance and the tokenomics are favoring investors, right? That's the point. Yeah, but in general, when you guys are shifting through, I think the best process too, just to conclude this video, um, by far probably the most valuable information you can get here, um, is find people with credibility in your industry. So if it's gaming, find people with serious credibility. Uh, if it's, you know, DeFi like me, find people in DeFi, developers, right? and see what they're talking about and derive your research from them. And they'll do a lot of the filtering for you. But it's really important that you just don't make purchase decisions, you know, off of what some guy said on Twitter or what some guy said on YouTube. Like I always tell you guys consistently over and over again, I will start your research for you. Like I have this mechanism. I tell you the cryptos that I'm talking about. You must, you must build on that research for yourself. That is the only way to true financial independence in crypto. It's not just me covering my butt saying it's not financial advice. This is true, real, and anyone I've ever seen make serious profits. And trust me, I have 1,500 members in my group. Anyone I've ever seen make real money, real money, do their own research. And when we're in live Q&As and Fundamental Secrets, they do so much research that they're teaching me stuff, right? I am one human. Right? You have to do it for yourself. You have to take your own responsibility for your own actions. That's it for this video. If you like the quality of this content, hit like. If you don't, leave some constructive criticism. Subscribe for more video updates. And like I always say, if you don't get with it, you will get left behind. Thanks for watching this, guys. Catch you in the next one.